Well, we were watching the, uh, the last 10 minutes there backstage on a, on a monitor where we could see that monitor about that big. Probably not the best way to see it, but you saw it on a big screen there. So that, that is the show that fills the screen. Uh, and uh, we have entered a new age, I think. Uh, as I said at the beginning, I think a couple of years ago, this probably wouldn't have been in anyone's imagination. But here we are. And I'm going to first get to the bottom of how the show came about. Uh, but we will talk about uh, Amazon's model for getting this to us, because I think it's very interesting. And I uh, have to start with Ben, Ben Watkins, whose idea this was. Now, uh, you worked, you were basically had a job for life on mm -hmm. Burn Notice. That's right. You worked there, you were writing for that from the beginning to the end, pretty much, weren't you? Yeah, I started yeah. as a staff writer and ended as executive producer, yeah. so it was sort of a PhD of uh, writing and producing television. Yeah, so that's a, that's a, you know, that's a hell of a way to spend seven years. And where did this idea, the idea for this, which I'm thinking of as your, your passion project, did that come while you were working on Burn Notice? Yeah, it did. I mean, I think the, the germ, the initial germ of the idea, which was um, I, I had a fascination with uh, zealotry uh, and, and sort of not just the people who, who are zealots, um, who become obsessed with one thing, and, and, and with that there comes this sort of power and charisma and magnetism, but also um, some, some, there's a bad side to that. They're able to accomplish things, but there are also major consequences that they don't really care about. Um, and I, I was fascinated with that, those individuals, but also with the people around them, because it's, it's such a rare thing, and I think it's very discomforting, and so people tend to uh, label them as either insane or inspired, they, they become marginalized. Mm. And I really wanted to explore that dynamic, and that was the initial germ. And then uh, to put that in a contemporary space, I actually stumbled upon what turned out to be another major driving force for me, which is this lack of purpose or causes that you could really get people behind. Um, and it did two things. One is it sort of like made me get in touch with and confront my own um, issues about I, I, what I now call sort of a, a cult of ambivalence that I think permeates society. It's a, if, so if you think about making a character who's going to be a zealot modern day, um, what is going to be their cause? And uh, it couldn't be global warming. Uh, it, it couldn't be, you know, sort of the 99 and the 1 or any of the, you know, there was, uh, it was, had to be something um, that everyone, even if they didn't agree with what the character's doing, they would understand the motivation and that became grief. And then the second part of it was sort of like to explore what it is like when you don't really have a cause, when, when society, it's so easy and convenient to live your lives now that you can say you believe something or you could say that something is, is dominates your beliefs and yet you don't change your life because of it. Uh, I wanted to explore that. And there's something biblical about a judge as well, isn't there? Uh, absolutely. Well, I mean, once I decided that it, that it had to be a contemporary character, I needed him to be uh, in, a, in a prominent place. And I also loved the irony of a judge who gets to make these decisions that change people's lives, that it can actually end people's lives. They never actually have to do it themselves. And they also never have to really deal with the fallout from it. So uh, that was why I decided to go with the judge. So did you write a spec script? Is that how it began? Yeah. Did you pitch it? You pitched it before that? Or so, oh, the well, I mean, it was, I mean, you've seen the show. Mm. So uh, I originally had the idea and I started, I tried not to write it because I, I was like, there's no way this is getting made. And that's one of the things about this business. You get into this routine where you start saying, I have this passion. Could it ever realistically be made? Um, and so I was really trying not to write it, but every morning I would wake up with a new idea about it. And finally, uh, even though my agents were sort of nudging me in a different direction, I finally just said, I have to get this off my chest. And I didn't know if it would ever get made, but I knew I would never regret writing it. And so what was the, uh, what was the next step? When did Amazon um, come into view? Did it, did it go elsewhere beforehand? No. Well, I mean, obviously, we, well, the first thing, the most important thing is uh, when we put together the initial team, there was a script. And um, the incredible Mark Forster got his hands on it and decided to make it the first project he would do in the landscape of television. And that was a major, major um, step forward for us. And shortly thereafter, we met Judge Pernell Harris, Ron Perlman, um, who no one knew at the time, but was getting ready to leave Sons of mm -hmm. Anarchy. Uh, and the timing was perfect. 
and was looking for the right project, but he had very specific requirements. And part of it was he wanted a great script that was really pushing boundaries, and he wanted a, a, a really world-class filmmaker. And we just happened to have that. Uh, and so we had, when we walked into Amazon, we had those three pieces. And, and you know, in Hollywood, you know, you're coming in the door with Mark Forster on one side and Ron Perlman on the other side, you feel like, it, you know, the, the deck is stacked in your favor. But because of the content, we knew there were gonna be some people scared of it. And we just happened to walk into the right door with Amazon that was not only saying, hey, you know, we really dig the pieces, we dig the story, um, and not only are we willing to, but they were excited about making this show. We, we should turn to Ron then, uh, and uh, the, the winding up of Sons of Anarchy, which you did for, for six seasons, and uh, made a hell of an impact in that. And although TV was good to you early on in your career, Beauty and the Beast was a, a huge driver in your success in the early days. And then you had Sons of Anarchy. And so you basically hooked on great TV after Sons of Anarchy. You wanted to do more of that. Well, also, there was a sense um, being involved in Sons um, and being on one of the kind of early pioneers of where TV began to become way more expansive. Storytelling began to become more expansive because you could actually just widen what you were able to do on cable television, pay television like HBO, and, and then with the addition of Amazon, which mirrors the, the, the kind of HBO model where, you know, you, whatever you shoot, you can show. Um, there was a sense that I was in, living in a time where the best work was all seem, seemed to be flowing toward television, because this is where originality was at a premium. And um, it, it, it's, it's kind of seductive, you know, to the notion of, of being where um, the greatest storytelling is taking place and um, knowing that you're living in a period that's probably got a shelf life to it. I, I can't imagine this, this wonderful fertility that's happening in television right now you know, lasting forever. The, the, the geniuses will figure out a way to fuck it all up. Um, <laughs> but um, for right now, uh, this is the place to be. And um, uh, um, I mean, like they used to say back on the farm, I sure hope you liked it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we need to uh, talk about the, the model, the Amazon model, which got us here, which is, this was shown, premiered the pilot. Uh, last year on Amazon. And I'm sure people here know about this, but if not, I'd like to just, just get to the nuts and bolts of it. You basically ask the customers if they want to see the series, which used to be in the gift of the TV industry, but now is in the gift of the people who are going to watch the thing. So perhaps uh, you could just explain the, the, the thinking behind that and how that works for those that don't know the full technical details of it. Because it is pretty new. It is, it is new, and you know, for a company like Amazon that, you know, when it enters the TV space and it's kind of self-proclaimed the, the most customer-focused company on the planet, we knew they were going to want to do something different. And what's great about this kind of model is you have a chance to take these risks, and part of the exact reason we were interested in the show is everything that you know, Ben and Ron were describing. It had sort of the holy trinity of, you know, development, uh, passion, originality, and talent with, you know, this whole cast and, and the crew. And it's really fun to just take these swings. We don't have to, we're not trying to play it safe. We are trying to take bold swings. And part of what, you know, this system allows us to do is just make better decisions about, you know, what we're actually ordering in the series. And it's really exciting to share these shows at this stage with the audience, with the customers, and see what kind of feedback we get from them. There's all kinds of different ways to you know, pay attention to that from, you know, anybody can go on and look at the IMDB score, or look at the comments. And it is um, a really affirming way, I think, to make better decisions where, in my old world of working in the broadcast, in a world like, sure, you had 
50 people in a dark room that had nothing else to do on a Tuesday afternoon than to you know, watch it. And you got maybe something useful. Or you'd hear these stories all the time about how at the 11th hour, a network president's you know, son watched the show and decided he didn't like it. So then the show didn't get ordered. <laughs> well, th this sort of negates all of that sort of false information or false feedback, because you, you have the law of large numbers here. But the, but the old way of thinking is saying, well, if you, if you let the audience decide, then they're, you're going to get the most conservative result. Whereas this is, this is not a conservative show. This is a risk-taking you know, adult show. That's right. And so if they're saying this is what we want, then... Well, there's not actually voting, and it's not Survivor or no, American Idol, yeah. right? And we don't take our hands off the wheel. <laughs> we, you know, remain firmly in charge of it. But it's just helping us. It's a useful way of making better decisions. And yeah. clearly, what the audience was telling us is that they wanted something different. They wanted something distinct. There's plenty of good, ordinary television out there that's available for free. But if you're going to you know, ask people to make an extra effort and to you know, pay to access it, they're going to want something that's distinct. And that's exactly what these guys did. And how important was uh, transparent, do you think, in the perception changing with uh, what you were doing? Because that was treated uh, in the awards ceremony season as a normal piece of television, if I may use the old word. Well, there's no doubt about it. Transparent was transformational for everything that we're doing. And it's, it's so exciting to have a show that um, registers like that with the audience for being so distinctive and, and different. And you know, from the, offset, uh, the onset, like, that's what Roy and the rest of the company was really trying to do, do things that are attention-getting, that are different, that are distinct, because you know, we're trying to go um, into a very competitive landscape, and you have to lead with quality. You have to lead with originality. Can I ask um, Morgan, because your, your job is the head of drama series, um, and obviously there's <coughs> going to be a lot more where this came from. What, what's your, what does your job entail? You know, it is what most people would assume it to be. It's um, working with writers and producers to find and identify the best you know, material and the best ideas and um, help shepherd them into production. And you know, we always sort of say we are wanting to not only be distinct and different, but you know, we want to really help you know, talented people like this make the best version of their show. And a lot of times that's really hard to do in traditional television when there are so many constraints. There are, you know, people are really nervous about where their businesses are going. You know, they're managing the decline of you know these businesses, and it's very difficult to make bold, creative choices when you're scared, like that. And we're we're trying to create the safest kind of environment possible so they can be bold and daring. So, in, in a way, your 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 job description is quite a traditional TV job. It's just done in a different environment for a different kind of company. That's really. right. I, I like to say to everybody that what's fantastic about this uh, platform mm -hmm. or service is that it's sort of the best of the old and the best of the new with none of the terrible stuff of either. Mm -hmm. uh, Jay, can you um, fill us in on your job? Because you're head of uh, Amazon Video in Europe. And obviously, it's a global company. Everything is global these days. But how, how, does, yeah. how does that work from your end? Yeah, so I'm in charge of uh, Primates and Video for the UK, Germany, and Austria. Um, and we are just seeing huge momentum now. Um, and really, because of shows like this um, that break through, it started with Transparent, and people really started to notice um, the slate we have coming up with Man in the High Castle and then Hand of God. Um, it's a competitive market in the UK. It's great for customers. There's great TV happening. But I think what we're doing here is totally different. Um, and recently, you know, we've announced Ripper Street's coming back for season four and five. I know that's a, you're a fan of that show. Um, as well as our Clarkson announcement with Jeremy, which is coming next year. So, you know, we are really focused on the customers here in the UK. So every, every market, we try to work backwards from those customers and what they want. And so for us, it'll be a combination of great shows coming from Amazon Studios, as well as local shows that make sense for the UK market. Um, and the great thing for us is it's working. So we're going to continue to double down on that. Can, and can you just reassure us that you're not out to destroy the BBC? That's what we're really Yeah, we are, not, 
Yeah, I'm happy to do that. We are not. I'm going to go on the record out to destroy the BBC. No, we like the BBC. They're not. They're not going <laughs> to get the BBC. It's OK. It's fine. Uh, they saved Ripper Street. They're going to save Jeremy Clarks. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about the show uh, itself again. Uh, the cast is amazing. We uh, also saw uh, Andre Royo there on screen. Uh, brilliant. Always good to see somebody from The Wire continuing on and playing a mayor. Um, the, the role of what used to be the wife, Dana. Now, you know, a, a number of years ago, that would have been seen as a kind of second fiddle role, but that has changed completely. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Robin Wright in House of Cards, Edie Falco in The Sopranos. Uh, Anna Gunn in Breaking Bad. These right. are not secondary roles, and so and you've got another one of those, haven't you? You've landed one of those plum roles. Right. Well, it's interesting that you name those other roles because in the beginning you didn't quite get that, which I think is true of this show too, which I like. It's slowly my character emerges and you start to see the power that she is behind the man and maybe starts to come in front of the man. Mm. So it's it's subtle build, which I like. So you're, you're, you're obviously delighted to get the part and to, to read the script originally. Well, I'm happy to be on Amazon, because I just knew, because I've been on network TV for a long time, mm. and I knew that that was the future. So I feel like this is where it's at. I mean, yes, I love the script, I love Ben's passion, I love working with Ron and everybody, but I feel like we are where it's at right now, and that's exciting as an yeah. actor. Um, Julian, you are one of ours who's gone over there and stolen, <laughs> stolen an American actor's job. Um, do you feel bad about that? <laughs> we, we are doing it all the time. To be fair, they steal enough of ours, so, you know. That's <laughs> right. not true. <laughs> there was a time when, when uh, as far as I remember, British actors couldn't do American accents. Now all British actors can do American accents. I don't know if that's Why true. Why is that? Because we have to if we want to work, work over there. Yeah. Um, I mean, I did this, this movie years ago. Um, and the director of that was giving me advice on working in America, and he said the thing you need to be able to nail before anything is to, to do the American accent. And, and so some, like this, this is now, it's fine, you, it's, the dialect is a, is a hook into the character, and so when I was researching preachers and, and looking at their charisma on TV, often they were Southern, and it was another avenue to find out who, who Paul is. Mm. Well, it's a, it's a great part to get, obviously. And, uh, oh, it's the, the role of a lifetime. I mean, you asked me earlier, you said, you know, is this, this could be uh, the role and the, the, the highlight of a career. And, and to be honest, it has been already, irrespective of what happens now. I'm having the best time. I'm so proud of this show, proud of these people. And knowing them and working with them now for uh, a year and a half, I have such deep respect for them and, and deep love which is wicked, so I'm so proud of this. <laughs> it's nice. But I truly, like I mean it. Like it. I really am. There's a lot of love in the room. It's yeah, good. there is. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of tension out there. It's nice we can bring love. It's good. Uh, We're going to name men. Amen. <laughs> Amazon saves. <laughs> I've, uh, I've seen the second and third episode, but I'm not going to talk about actual stuff that happens in those, but uh, it carries on in that vein. And, uh, the momentum you know, grinds on it. Uh, it's incredible. Um, your character, I don't know, is, uh, you have a, a pretty tough scene which was happening while we were sitting outside the stage. <laughs> that's, uh, but that's nothing compared to stuff that happens in two and three, uh, which you'll just have to trust me on. Um, it's an intense part. It must have been pretty difficult to play some of that stuff. Sure. Uh, yeah, he, he kept it interesting for me, he and the other writers. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't, I don't know what to say about that. <laughs> are, you, are you one of those uh, people who doesn't like to see yourself on screen? Because a lot of people don't. Uh, are you one of them? I think like is a strong word. Uh, <laughs> 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 right? um, I think it's natural. It's like, it's like hearing the sound of your voice. For the, and you just go, I don't sound like that, do I? Uh, so it happens when you watch yourself on screen as well. Like, I did not. Because you're not aware or at least I don't want to be that aware of where, what my face is doing necessarily when I'm feeling certain things, mm. especially a role like that. And it was very important for us when uh, shooting the pilot and then throughout the series to have uh, Jocelyn be very uh, raw. Mm -hmm. So like no makeup and you know, I didn't want to worry about any of it. I didn't want any, uh, what they do on, when you're on set is they touch you up, they touch up, they come and they fix your makeup in between. I didn't, it's, it's distracting and it was very, very nice not to have to worry about that. 
And uh, it, so watching it later, I didn't even, it was nice not to focus on that. Yeah. And it was nice to see if it, if I felt for myself. Because I was, it was very much a part of me, but also very different than me. I'm, she's very much a, a, a raw, open nerve, and she's, um, but she's not a victim in any way. So it was, no. it was walking a very fine line that I was, that I hoped uh, people would, would. I mean, she's, she's technically the victim of crime, but the character is not, isn't played like a victim and doesn't, doesn't totally panel well, she's that in, way. She's in the, she's in the, she's coming out, she's not the victim because it doesn't happen to her at the moment. It happened seven months ago. So you're actually seeing her trying to pull everything back together, mm. which is more interesting, I find. You know, and things that continue to happen continue to happen to a lot of people in life. You don't necessarily uh, sit and wait for things. Just things just happen, and you have to deal with them. And mm. you either fall into the disparity of it, or you kind of pull through. And, and she she fights. Ron, the um, I mean, the opening scene is amazing. Anyway, that's a that's a hell of a way to to start the show. Um, that was the easy part. I definitely <laughs> not. So you were out there in that fountain. Mm. Naked? I was. <laughs> <laughs> Commitment to the art. I like it. But you must have known when you read that scene, this is going to be, this is a part that I need to get. Yeah, uh, it's, it's amazing I, that I accepted the role anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so what are, you, what are you like to work with? Because you, you know, what, you've got a lot of experience. What, what am I like to yeah. work with? What do you like? Are you, well, do, you, do, you, do you give, do you give uh, advice to the I'm a little, I'm a little overweight. I'm a little overweight. <laughs> Um, as you could tell from the fantasy. Uh, what was the question? Do you, do you uh, dispense advice to younger actors? Uh, do you have advice to give younger actors? I mainly ask, uh, are you going to finish that donut? <laughs> no, um, I'm, uh, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of, uh, of, of actors in general, and these particular actors uh, specifically. Um, and, uh, He's a dream. He is a dream to work with. You should be asking us. That. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's so wonderful. He's, he's, he's an actor's actor. He just likes to act. And you're in the scene, and you're just in it, and you do it, and no nonsense. You just do the best you can. He's and great. he gave me some amazing advice. Uh, this one episode, which I was kind of nervous about, and he gave me this line, and I say it to everyone, all my actor friends, and he said, make every word count. And if you think about the words, but think about each word individually, and make, making them count, it's great. But obvious advice, but it's fantastic, and I used it. Wow. And in terms of working with him, he's he's fantastic. He's as an actor. First of all, you've got to know about Ron. He is the coolest motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> no one, I repeat, no one comes close. Um, as an actor, he he has this monumental earth sign physical presence, which he uses. What makes him a spectacular actor is he has this sensitivity in his eyes, and, and particularly with, with this character. And, and the results are devastating and magnificent to watch. Same thing with Dana, mm -hmm. watching mm -hmm. her work as this mother, um, trying to grapple with the wife and the woman that she has to be. And that tension between the two is so incredible, not just in that episode, watch but episode throughout the season. Two. So two coming up, my gosh. Well, Dana. you know, I, I mean, I think one of the things that was great about the entire cast, and it's one of those things is as a, as a showrunner, you're hoping for this, um, but you're not expecting it. Uh, you, it's, it's a dream come true to be working with, with actors and, and who are, have a complete mastery over what they do and their craft and their skill. But that, that's one thing, and they could go in and do a great job with that alone. But we had a cast that was looking to challenge themselves. And um, you know, we obviously put them in positions. You can tell from the pilot, and it only grows from there. We put them in positions where they were going to have to take risks if they were going to pull it off. And you're talking about you know, performers who have seen and done it all and are already so accomplished. And yet, they're literally asking to be pushed out of their comfort zone, and they're embracing that. So you have someone like Ron Perlman who says, yes, I will step into this freezing fountain and do 20 takes butt naked in the middle of San Pedro, California, um, and, and show my entire, not just physical self, but go deep inside, I mean. Deep. And if you knew San Pedro, you'd know that's not easy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. um, and, but our cast just really, 
embraced that and it was so gratifying to see we would have these conversations and it required that because some of the things that we were asking them to do as characters required that we'd have these conversations about you know these things that are really scary these places that they have to go um, but instead of them coming to me and saying hey can we tone that down it just turned into this conversation of where are we going how can we push it and I was ready to you know see how much I could nudge him and I was ready to you know okay well if, if you're not comfortable with that no instead it became a conversation of where how far can we take it and even though I'm terrified I'm willing to go there and that is a, a rare experience I have to just add that I you know over my career I've been involved with dozens and dozens of you know shows like this and I have to say that I've never seen an esprit de corps of a group quite like this and it's really a testament to Ben and Mark and Ron and the tone that they have set for this that everybody has been so free to take the chances that they did and it's why you know we're so proud of the show. But the, 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 the kind of march that started kind of small and then expands as it does was the whole thing was characterized by people signing on to something unlike anything they'd quite ever seen before and maybe that was going to be a little bit uncomfortable. When, when Amazon came on board, um, I was beginning to understand uh, how, how rare it was going to be for somebody to, to sign on to this particular kind of material because it's got the word God in the title, it's got this discussion that can be a pretty slippery slope, especially in a country where evangelicism is, is, is definitely a part of the political landscape. And a lot of people would have shied away from that. A lot of people would have shied away from every aspect of what everybody on the stage was kind of asked to do, starting with the fountain. And yet, that became the thing that was most attractive was, I should be doing something because it scares me. And let's see how far we can go with this and be on that tightrope and make sure we don't go a little bit this way or a little bit this way and fall to our deaths, you know? <laughs> and that is what characterizes an exciting time in an artist's life. Whether there's a shelf life to it, you know, none of us really have any control over that. Morgan a little bit more than the rest of us, but, um, <laughs> but uh, this was an amazing year for me uh, to, to be surrounded by this amazing, um, group of artists and, and tested everything that's beautiful about um, going deep inside yourself to, 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 to rise to whatever creativity is, is, is uh, called for. Have we uh, got any questions from the floor that you'd like to put? Because if so, we would, uh, we've got roaming mics. And uh, I don't know if we're putting the lights up, but... Uh... My eyesight's not good. Luckily, there's people in the front row. Um, can we want to come down to the front? Because the first hand went up there. We've got about five minutes or so, to, so let's just see if we can get a few things answered reasonably quickly. Hello. Um, what has the American reaction been like? Because to us, the sort of evangelical movements, it's not something we have over here. What is the American reaction to the... Well, the, the, I mean, the reaction, overall, the reaction was actually surprisingly, um, I knew that this was going to be one of those, um, the subject matter would create some derision. Um, and I was uh, really pleasantly surprised at how enthusiastically it was embraced in America, uh, because some of the stuff that we talk about and the way that we're doing it, um, just unabashedly, and, and there's no agenda. Uh, we're trying to throw fodder out for both sides of every conversation that we have, including religion. Uh, and, you know, there's a lot of people who feel like that's uncomfortable, but it was actually really embraced. Uh, but on the other hand, there were people who said, you know, I hate the show because it's talking about religion, re it's, it's, you know, glorifying religion. And um, one of the things that I loved the most was you could literally hear from two people. One would say, I hate it because it's glorifying religion. The other one would say, uh, you know, I hate it because it's, you know, uh, undermining religion. And to me, that meant we were doing something right because we were putting the conversation out there. 
And we're making the audience draw some conclusions. And when you do that, you have to admit you have a little bit of an agenda. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're, we're hoping, we want the audience to have to draw the conclusions for this show. And it's not just with regard to religion. There are a lot of themes that we tackle. Uh, and we, we would much rather put the audience in a place where they're drawing a conclusion, which puts them in a place where they have to get in touch with how they actually feel about something instead of hearing us tell them how they should feel. Which is art. That's mm -hmm. art. You, know, you don't look at a piece of art and everybody agrees unanimously what it does to them. It does something different to each and every person. That's a true testament of art. And that's what this does. It's not concise one way or another. Another hand? Oh, well, there's one right at the back there, uh, gentlemen five or six rows in the back. I'm just going at the speed of hand going up. Hi there. Um, I would just like to, first of all, thank Amazon for listening to the people who voted. I was one of those people for the show. Um, loved it, second time I've seen it now, brilliant. Um, I'd like to ask the cast, um, how did you manage to tap into the character? You were, you were talking a lot about pushing boundaries and things like that, but was, there, was it completely out of your kind of comfort zone, or was there something about each character that you could pick on and, and then work on from there and build on from there? Um, I, I guess I'll start. Um, the, um, the writing was so vivid. Um, and, and at the same time, the, the character was going through stuff I could only imagine. But the way the, the, way the, the, the situations and, and, and the juxtapositions of people's relationships towards one another and, 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 and circumstances were, were written by Ben, um, I felt confident that there was enough specific information that I knew where I needed to go. I, didn't, never, I never felt confident that I was going to be able to get there, but um, the, the, there was a clarity to, 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 to what the journey needed to be, um, which is what attracted me to it. It was like, okay, let's see if Let's see if we can take these two very, very disparate places and find some, some way to congeal in the middle. Do you want to go next, Julian? Yeah. Sure. Um, so first of all, it was the writing itself. Um, ben had written this exceptional character, so it was really just a matter of, of playing it. What I was interested in and what I really liked exploring were the, 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 the charisma, the, the charismatic a aspect of these evangelical preachers. Uh, not that T.D. Jakes was someone I was going after, but when you watch him preach, it's incredible. He's an amazing performer. Uh, with Paul specifically, I was trying to wonder what it was that he wanted. So there was that physical aspect of, you know, material. He wants to be rich. He wants the, the nice suit. And then on a metaphysical level, um, to be adored, to see that connection when he's preaching and the eyes looking back. Um, so those are all things that I explored. And then finally, it was, again, Ben's great writing and the way he collaborates with you as an actor. So in our first rehearsal, Ben and Mark Forster asked me what scared me most, what my biggest fear was. And the answer to that was, was episode five. <laughs> <laughs> Keep watching. Uh, um, well, they always say it starts with casting, and I just want to say, you know, I didn't really get it at first, but the way Ben cast this was so smart because you think the character is one thing, but the person he cast is not that character. <laughs> he went the opposite, which already creates a tension between the role and, and, the, and the actor. And then for me, it was, again, it starts with the writing. You know, my character's name is Crystal Harris, and I've said this before, but to me, it's all in her name of Crystal, which is fake diamonds. She's not real, she's fake. Mm -hmm. And, and that not, not that she's not genuine, but it's more that uh, she comes from a poor background, probably worked at a Dairy Queen, and she's never going back. So she's just going to keep moving forward. So that was sort of key for me. Mm -hmm. I, um, I think that to play any character, you have to find a little bit of yourself in them. Uh, and also to be able to step back from them very uh, cleanly. It's important. And with brilliant writing, you're able to do that seamlessly and uh, somewhat effortlessly. Um, I also, I'd like to point out the cast members that aren't here today, who are, what's, what's really great is that we all bring such specific sensibilities 
that are very different from one another and very specific. And like Dana said, we're all very different than the characters themselves. And I, I wish you got to see the rest of the cast here today and how they are as, as just as people, not as their characters. And it's, it's really quite fascinating, I think. And they all do such... And Garrett and, and yeah. Emiatsi and, and, and Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Yeah, Elizabeth McLaughlin. And Andre. And, and Miyati Cordinal, the Andre Royal. I, we, we really did try to... Um, make the right choice, not the expected choice. And that, 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 that again, was one of the testaments that, to, to the way it was working with Amazon. Um, even in the times that we didn't always agree about every choice that was made um, in terms of the show, but they were always about what is the passion? What is the reason behind it? And that included casting. And so we made a lot of what I would say unexpected choices with casting, but they all worked out. And one of the things that we had in common was these actors wanted to take risks. So you have, you know, like, you know, all the actors that are here, and, the act, and, and we rolled deep uh, with, the, with the Hand of God cast, and it was, um, you know, it, it shows. And I think you'll be able to see which moments are the risk-taking moments, or which moments are the ones that we pushed. You'll be able to tell. Yeah, yeah I look forward to episode five as well. There's, um, that, we're out of time, so. Uh, oh, we've got one more question. You want to ask a question, right? It would have to be a one-word answer, and a one-word <laughs> question. <laughs> It's just to say, uh, I remember going to the cinema and seeing Hellboy with Ron in it, and that was my favourite movie when I was a wee child, and then seeing him in Sons, and then he was like the best actor in the Sons, and when they killed him off, I kind of stopped watching it, because it was like, <laughs> <laughs> there was no point. So I'm excited to see uh, the new Hand of God in September when it comes out on Amazon. I've got one question for you, Ron. Could you sign my clay bobblehead? <laughs> <laughs> so that's good, because that is not a question. That's not a question. Thank you, Ron. There you go. That is, uh, that's more audacity than the question. So um, we will, we will uh, end there. So again, I'm going to give everybody's name, and then you're going to applaud. But uh, look out for the show, which starts on September the 4th. So we'll go from that end again. Julian Morris, Ron Perlman over there, Danny Delaney, Alona Tal, uh, Morgan Wend Wandell, and Jay Marine at the other end, and the creator, Mr. Ben Watkins. So thank you very much.